Let's dream. So, Sockhead, where are we gonna get enough ice to make snow cones? I'm sure we could locate sufficient frost shavings in the backyard coolers of the neighborhood kids, Eddie. I am cool like a cabbage, guys. <laughs> Let's play Ed, Ed, and Eddie! Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond. Welcome to my Let's Play of Ed, Ed, and Eddie, the Miss Adventures for the Nintendo GameCube. Oh my god, I'm so excited for this one. You all know that my favorite childhood show, of course, was SpongeBob SquarePants. I raved about that enough times during my Battle for Bikini Bottom Let's Play. But over on the Cartoon Network side of things, a different champion reign. It was the trio of legends known as Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Anyone who's seen this show knows how absolutely legendary it is. It has made its mark in history as one of the most insane, amazing, and outlandishly hilarious shows of all time. I have a million good things to say about this show, so hopefully we'll have enough time to talk about it all along the way. But for now, let's just go ahead and get things started by destroying that ice box and making Jimmy shut the heck up. <laughs> Getting a bit ahead of yourself, aren't you, Eddie? Okay, we got our first ice cube. You could use attacks with any Ed, it doesn't have to be specifically Ed, and that's what I love about this. You get to play as all three characters right off the bat. Just press the R button to switch between Double D, Ed, and Eddie. Each character has their own unique abilities that are specific to them, and you'll need to work together in order to get through this game. Everyone has their own jump and uh, attack mechanism. For Eddie, you have a trick wallet. It's really weird looking. It kind of looks like a yo-yo. That's what I thought it was when I was a kid. For Double D, you have a ruler, which is very fitting for him. As a kid, I thought it was a bat, and I thought it was really awkward. And for Ed, you have what else but big ol' head. Just go ahead and smack things like crazy. This entire first level is mainly going to be showing off Ed, so we're going to stick with him for the majority of it. Anytime you get near an object, you're going to see like a little green thing around it when you're controlling Ed specifically. That means he could go ahead and pick it up. <laughs> okay, excuse me. Uh, you go ahead and pick up objects whenever you get close to them. Uh, the squirrels are not really all that much of a threat to you. They don't do anything. There are red squirrels that do attack you, so keep that in mind. It's, it's sort of weird to see like animals in Ed and Ed because like, the game is so like exclusive in what sort of characters it shows off, so it's kind of weird. But it also was just weird to like have fighting and whatnot in general. It's just a really weird thing to see, but I know they had to have some enemies and some sort of combat in order to make it a video game, so I see what they're doing here. I got an idea. You guys push me and I will smash the wood with my head. Okay, take it back. This game is totally not faithful to the show. Ed has an idea? I'm sorry, but like that completely threw me off when I first heard it. It was just so weird to hear Ed say, "I've got an idea." I, I know it's so sing I know it's like giving you a tutorial, but like it's so stinking weird. But all you gotta do is press the L button to use the Ed's special attacks. For Ed specifically, it is the Batter Ed. He just runs forward with full force, destroying everything in his path. Very, very cool. It's also the fastest mechanic. And chicken! Chickens are present in each level. Catch the chicken by stunning it with any attack, and then grabbing it with Ed. Just go ahead and attack it, press Y, and you're good to go! You got yourself an Easter Egg. There are six Easter Eggs in each level, or no, not in each level, in the entire game, one per level. And they unlock little extra goodies for you. For this Easter Egg specifically, if you go into the pause menu with copyright and music, they'll have to mute. You're gonna go to the Easter Eggs, and you have the big head option. You go ahead and turn that on. Your characters now have freakishly huge heads. I don't know why they decided to do this, but I'm glad that they did, because it's so stinking weird. Like, the characters did not entirely translate to 3D very well, but, I don't know, considering it's Ed and Eddie, I'm kind of okay with it because it's like, it's meant to be janky and whatnot. And you can see there's so much personality in just, like, the tiniest little de details, because, like, Eddie's, like, looking back and forth, kind of being sneaky and sly, always thinking, always looking to see what he could take advantage of. Ed is very absent-minded, his pupils do not, like, go at the same pace or the same speed or whatever, it looks really stinking weird. And then Double D is just cool, calm, collected, always focused forward, and he's just looks the most normal out of the bunch if you want to call that normal but it's so stinking funny looking oh my god but we're gonna go back and turn that off because i don't want to wear the big heads not the costumes go to the easter eggs 
and take that off so this is going to be a 100 playthrough there are a lot of collectibles to get like costume pieces uh easter eggs and a plethora of jawbreakers so i hope that you enjoy looking for all those things or watching me look for all those things because i have not played this game in a very long time and it might be a bit difficult to remember where everything's located hopefully not too terrible this game is rather short so it won't be too bad right here we got a cat this thing would give garfield a run for his money in terms of chubbiness all you need to do is run over here, and you'll see that there is a dog right here. We only ever saw one dog in the show is when they were selling newspapers. But right here, oh, there's a sandbox as well. So many things to talk about. Uh, if you just throw the cat over to the dog, and whoa, I didn't even know you could hit the icebox and open it up with that. It's a speedrunning tactic. Dog just runs away. You can't actually take out the dog with your attack, so you have to use the cat. And we get ourselves another ice cube. If you ever see a sandbox, make sure to run over to it with Ed and press Y to dig a hole, dig a hole, dig a hole, dig a hole. Your controller shakes insanely violently. And we get a costume piece. How wonderful. You keep on digging if you want to, if you just want to feel that vibration here. Ed say, dig a hole, dig a hole. But it doesn't really do all that much. Okay, now that's taken care of, we could go over this away. I don't think there's anything here for us, but I could have to check. I made her Ed's head to check, but he seems to be okay with it. Well, let's just go on over here now, and if we check this area, no Ed's allowed. Gee, I wonder where we're supposed to go. Look! Another cooler! More ice for my scam! <laughs> but first, we gotta get rid of that loudmouth sister of yours, Ed. Quick, Sockhead! Use your slingshot on Jimmy's dolls! Violence only begets violence, Eddie. Do it, you sissy! Watch those water balloons! Fine, but it will be on your guilty conscience. Oh, guys, I can hate Sarah. <laughs> Sarah's like the most despicable human being. I don't know. It's a tie between her, Sissy from Code Lyoko, and Mandy from Totally Spies, and like the reward for the most despicable human being in a cartoon award. Uh, if you try just going up here regularly, then you're gonna get stopped. Yeah, that's all she has to say. It's really singing weird, but that's all she really needs to say in order to uh, get us to back off. Uh, if you head back here, though, there is Jawbreakers! And Double D's just floating in midair. Oh my god, this game is super janky and I love it. But yeah, there are 40 Jawbreakers to find in this game. We are going to be finding them all. Some of them are in levels and others are gotten through other means, which we'll get into later. But yeah, so in order to uh, get through here, we're going to need to use Double D. Double D's special ability, he has the Slingshot, which you can use by pressing the X button. It's kind of a weak attack. I don't really use it all that much because it's not really reliable in terms of where it's going to land. But if you press the Z button, you can go into first person with it and shoot that way and have a lot more accuracy. I don't know why Jimmy's hanging his dolls on a clothesline. It looks really weird, but whatever. Maybe they got wet from water balloons. Hmm, I wonder if we've done this before. I think it's just crying because there's water falling from the sky randomly and he doesn't question it, but they're out of here. That's all we need to worry about. Go over here, get another ice cube. We're already up to four. I don't really know how we're going to make snow cones for the entire neighborhood with just five ice cubes, but whatever. Uh, there's nothing else left for us over here, so we just knock this bike over. We could go this way now. We need more ice. We need more ice. Switch to Ed, lift up and throw the squirrels in the window and uh, into the house. Okay, so we threw... We, scared the kids over into this house and now we got to scare them out of the house uh i don't know why we can't just go in there because it's ed's stinking house but then again it's sarah so she'll probably just kick us out because like she's insane like that there's an episode like the show where they're just wanting to watch tv and like they're getting snacks in the kitchen and sarah freaks the heck out and demands that they leave the entire house and she kicks them out and like locks them out for no good reason it's infuriating and I like how um, they're trying to watch a monster movie and Double D's just like, why don't we just watch the movie at our house, Eddie? And Eddie's just like, what? And ruin the plot? It's so stinking good. I love it so stinking much. The show is amazing. If you have not seen it, because like, I know a lot of stinking kids growing up that uh, said that they weren't allowed to watch it and Eddie because it was like too inappropriate for them or for their parents to handle or whatever. But it's stinking amazing. It's a legendary show. It's so fast, which is the, the amazing part. Because, um, when watching the Ed Marathon, because I watched all the episodes in preparation for this LP, there's 74 episodes of the entire series, it was so quick, it was, it felt a lot quicker than the Spongebob Marathon I went on, where I just watched the th first three seasons, which was 60 episodes. But the show is so fast-paced, it, like, just joke after joke after joke, it does not skip a beat, even in the first stinking season, it's so stinking quick. 
and like when season five comes around it's not all that slow honestly it's just that it's a normal paced show when they're kind of running out of ideas but it becomes a normal paced show rather than uh being slow paced but because it's normal paced in Ed and eddie it feels slow because uh the first four seasons were insanely fast so just kind of a weird uh contrast in that sense wow look at go I make a good squirrel tusser, huh, Eddie? Yeah! Nice job, Mono Bro! Let's head in! My god, I love how stinking creepy they look. Oh, just go in here and just clip inside. No transition or anything like that. Whatever. But no loading screen as well, so I guess that's nice. Uh, this place is completely ransacked. There's nothing for us to really do in here other than get on out. You'd think the ice cube would be in the refrigerator, but no, you gotta go ahead and. Uh, hit it like that. Oh, it is in the refrigerator, my bad. So go and grab that, but now we just need to make our escape. So, let's batter it out of here. And these wooden boxes, we actually have coins in them. Yeah, we could actually get money as the Eds. Hello. Uh, can we go back in? Thank you. We can get money as the Eds and not lose it immediately. How wonderful. The quarters, I don't know if they're coins or quarters or pennies or whatever, but they could be used for buying things later on. We will get into that at the end of this episode. Uh, that's about it for this area, I believe. You're always gonna want to look for those boxes because they'll always have money in them. Go in here and or go out here. Now we're magically outside. And where have we ended up? Uh, the neighborhood area. The neighborhood area. The backyard farm area of my favorite character that isn't Ed. Ouch. Yes, my favorite character is Ouch. Here is the red squirrel. And what do we got here? Hey! Check out those balls! They're just the right size for my scam! Cool it, Stretch! We're just gonna borrow your machine for a bit. Surely you just hands like a baby, Ed Boy. Only after you have toiled in filth like the son of a shepherd can you use such a machine. Be gone! Jeez! What's with that guy? Like, my god, Rolf's stinking dialogue alone is, like, absolutely legendary. If anyone, like, has not seen the show yet, just watch it for stinking Rolf and be like, how do people even write this stuff? Oh, when you defeat enemies, get these little blue balls. Uh, they're just called blue spheres in the instruction manual, but I like to think of them as gumballs, because I think it's a bit more appropriate. Not as great as jawbreakers, but they're good enough to get the job done, and by the job, I mean they heal you. Uh, but yeah, I think we just, uh... Head a bunch of stuff. There's more boxes over here. Let's go get some quarters. Don't want to get those. If we can. Uh, anything else over here doesn't seem like it. So, Ralph will not let us use his machine that's like making meatballs. Uh, we're gonna use that to make snow cones, supposedly. So, how are we gonna get to it, you may ask? Well, the only way we ever get anything done in the world of NNNE, and that's by making trouble. <laughs> Rolf. We get to use the machine when we're done. <laughs> oh my god, I love Ed so stinking much. Ed and Rolf are always my favorites, and then I also really love Plank. I had a little cardboard cutout version of it because I didn't have wood back then, I guess. They didn't have wood back then. I had a, like a little cardboard version of Plank that I made. I still have it in my old bedroom to this day. And then I eventually made a wooden Plank. And Cartoon Network actually released a Plank plushie a long time ago. They also had a blue plushie from Foster's, which I really wanted, but I didn't get it, unfortunately. Uh, but the plank one, I wanted that so much more, and I absolutely love it. In terms of also uh, Cartoon Network's website, they recently re-released the first season DVD on their website, which is really cool. Kind of wish it was like Blu-ray or whatever, but whatever. Also, how are we uh, gonna assure that the pigs stay in the cage? Because like we're not gonna fix the fence; we just throw them into the cage, and then they magically just stay there. Oh, we also got him a squirrel. Maybe that's the new bodyguard. Um, I didn't exactly get him back into the cage. That was sort of awkward, but yeah, this game is sort of janky in case you couldn't tell. Okay, I'll, I'll get the job done, even though he thought we did the job already. He just walks on over here all slow, like... Uh, but yeah, you can get the first season DVD on YouTube. Unfortunately, you can't get the entire series. I really hope they release a series DVD one day. But unfortunately, that is not the case, so it's kind of hard to get a hold of this show. But now that's taken care of, we can head in here. Uh, switch to double D. Got more crates right here that should get us more money. And more importantly, money in the sky. More importantly, there is a jawbreaker. Now that we got all that taken care of, if you want to go ahead and pause the game real quick, you could see a little menu called status where you could see how many collectibles are in each area. So it's really helpful in telling you 
uh, what you need to get before you leave. If I ever miss out on any collectibles when going through a level, I'll just make my way through it real quick before the episode is over. But right here we've gotten everything in this area, which is really cool. Now that's taken care of, you could go ahead and go to this machine with Double D and work your magic. So work your magic. Hmm, this should work. You've just completed Scam 1, cool your head, and after just the first mission we are already 11% done with the game. Snow cones for suckers! We're gonna be rich, I tell ya! <laughs> so they just cover the meatballs with ice and call it a snow cone. That's stinking amazing. And here we are in the cul-de-sac. Now things usually always end up bad for the Eds, but that first mission right there wasn't too terrible. I think that's like the best ending we've ever had for them in the entire series even. But yeah, it was so stinking amazing being able to walk around the entire stinking cul-de-sac in this world that I love so so much with these characters that I adore so so much. It was really stinking incredible seeing this for the first time. It's kind of weird that the game throws you into the first level right when you turn it on. Um, it doesn't put you here in the overworld, it just starts up the first level right away. But again, I guess it's sort of in the style of the show and being incredibly fast paced. You just run around the entire area, you can't go in any houses, but you can just run around the cul-de-sac. It is definitely the preferred travel system, you can press L to get out of bad red form. Here's Johnny and Plank, we're gonna see every character uh, later on throw each level, but you could run into everyone here in the cul-de-sac, which is really nice. Uh, if you're wondering where to go to mission one, that little arrow over there is where we're going to be doing mission two. But if you make your way over to uh, this door over here, that arrow right there is where you get into mission one. In case you want to go back there and play that mission again for any collectibles or just for funsies. Because it's so cool that the game has like also cutscenes. They don't have as much frames to them as like the actual show, but like they still look super faithful to the show. The animation's on point, the voice acting. Thank God they got all the voice actors from the uh, show back on into this game. It's so stinking cool, so stinking faithful. I absolutely adore this game, and I really hope that anyone who's watching that hasn't played this game gets to enjoy it along the, uh, with me as I re-experience it. But before we end the episode off, and just, okay, I guess we don't get coins from every oh, wooden box, I guess. Uh, this one we do. What we're gonna wanna do before we end the episode is head on over to this area in the playground because there is something very useful for us over here and that is another sandbox inside the sandbox is a quarter uh, I think we get more coins if we just keep on digging uh, nope that's it we just want to hear Ed say dig a hole more and more times no that's not why we're here uh, there is a gumball machine here it costs one cent for uh, well not a gumball machine a jawbreaker machine this is where you could get the majority of your jawbreakers every time you get one though it doubles the price so I'll have Teresa tell you how much money you need to have in order to get every single jawbreaker in this machine I think we're just gonna do it in one fell swoop Good morning. because I'm weird like that but yeah that is what we're going to be doing, I uh, just wanted to show this off for you, but that's about it for this episode. I am super excited to finally be playing this game, it's going to be a pretty short LP all things considered, but um, I'm really excited to finally re-experience this game because I haven't played it in a really long time, and it was great getting to re-familiarize myself with the show and see that it held up so well over the years, and I'm just excited to play the game again as well. Next time on Ed, Ed and Eddie The Misadventures. We are headed into the sewers for our second scam. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.